All right, this is the build in question. Right here, I have equipped what I prefer. Right here are the alternatives that some people use. I prefer this one because you can go for the assassin hood to get your cooldown faster with meditation, but I feel like I cannot afford to go in a fight without guardian helmet just because of the many crossbow that are going around, especially the light crossbow where you can perch the bomb with your healing. Same goes for the demon helmet. Demon helmet is a pretty interesting option since you're gonna silent your opponent, giving less space for them to counter you. Maybe after the nerf to guardian helmet in the next um, hog phase, then you're gonna see more, more play for this helmet. For now, I prefer this one. Same goes for the cape. I feel like every time that you are in a fight, your fir first attempt to kill somebody is it get countered. So you lose your bridge watch cape if you're using it. So usually you kill the person in the second try. That's why I prefer the Tefo cape that doesn't have that condition. Tap for Cape comes up really quick, only 15 second cooldown versus a minute. So even if you miss your first, first try, it's most more likely that you're gonna have your depth for, for the second try. Um, for the abilities, you know, pretty standard. Energy heal with your toughness on your chest piece, Hunter jacket with haste and also Quick Thinker to get your cooldown faster. And then on the boost, you use any leather piece with refreshing spring and then Quick Thinker. For the abilities on the dagger, you could use um, Surrender Armor, but I prefer Deadly Swipe, even it has a little bit less damage, but it's better for you to kite when you need to reset the fight. We usually go Shadow Edge, because of the stun, and also I think it adds a little bit more of the surprise element when you see somebody and you just rush at them, stun them, and start doing damage, people have less um, chance to react. Your E, and then on the passive, I go attack speed. Um, for the food, I go omelet. I prefer omelet over beef twos, and then you use a healing potion for, again, when you need to reset, kite, and run. Now I'm gonna show you the build in action. Hello everybody, the one back at you with another video. Today we're gonna talk about how to play slash counter one hand dagger. So I'm playing the one hand dagger here and the first fight we're gonna showcase one of the best items to counter one hand dagger which is the hunter hood. When I engage he activated, then I have to run because I lost my ability. My abilities are back up and I'm ready to go back at it. Once I landed my W there, I didn't have him targeted, so I didn't do any damage. So I lost my chance to kill him there. So I have to run. And that mistake will cost me the fight because in the third round, when I got my abilities back up, he also got his hunter hood back up and I couldn't do anything but just die there. Another weapon that is pretty hard to play against it is the one hand dagger himself. One hand dagger, counter one hand dagger, as long one of the players does a mistake. My mistake there was he line of sight me, I missed my W, and I just lost. Another weapon that is super hard to play against is crossbows. Crossbow because of the distance and also the knockback that they do to you. And most of them they run a mage rope that can purge your chest piece, your hunter jacket. So there you just die. Oh, I mean, I just died. I could have played it better. I feel like the win rate is like 60 to 40 stack uh, against the one hand dagger. Another weapon that is super good against one hand dagger is black hands. The build that is going around where they just heal and choose. They eat you for a lot of damage and then they activate their chest piece and their head piece to refresh ability and they just rinse and repeat and you don't do anything because they keep you uh, knocked back with the 
new Apollonian chess piece or the fin robe. Here we're fighting an axe guy that he decide to face tank my ability and he will just die. If you face tank a one hand dagger, you will just die unless you have a hunter hood. Another weapon that is pretty uh, getting traction and is super good against dagger is the the spears. The spears because they have a reflect on their W. As well, they can keep the the range while they'll slow you with a Q. Here we're gonna face another mirror match, which is a one hand dagger as well. I lost my first chance with my ability, so I just guide him. I'm getting my abilities back up. I'm getting ready to engage again. Here he guided me pretty well and I lost my chance to fight him again. So I need to run again. That's basically the play style for the one hand dagger if you're getting started with it. If you don't have your W, you don't have your E and you don't have your chest piece, you need to run. Once you get them, you can fight. If the opponent is low, then you can chase. If not, you just need to run. Another key aspect, if you wanna defeat the mirror match, I feel like having omelet versus beef too is a key part because you're gonna get your ability always before your opponent. That's what I choose omelet instead of the beef too because I, I feel like you don't really like damage. This axe guy, he's also face tanking me and he realized that he's not able to win that trade. So he decided to run at the end, but it was too late because we have pretty good mobility. So it's super hard for them to escape from us. Here we're facing a Claymore. Claymore are pretty dangerous, I want to say. If they know how to play, they can kill you as well. Because of their long range stun that they have. And it's packed with a lot of damage as well. Especially this guy using Helium Juice. You saw, you saw there that I activated my abilities. And then he went just in base. So I lost a little bit of damage while he was in base. Now I'm chasing him because he did all the, that he had to do. He don't have abilities. And my abilities are coming back real quick as well. He was getting a stack with the mobs there. Trying to... I would get a stack on myself instead of trying to hit the mobs. Or maybe he was trying to go hell and choose and then lose the aggro and the mobs will attack me instead of him. But it didn't work out well for him. For the next, next match, we're fighting like crossbow which is a pretty hard match as well because all they do is hit and run so it's pretty hard for us to keep consistent damage on them the key thing is always stick to your play style right there i don't have my abilities i don't chase him because he got the upper hand on me while i'm chasing him he just span his q and he will chip damage on me Also, one thing is like, I was getting used to play the one hand dagger, so I did a lot of mistakes on, on most of my fight because I activated my abilities and you have like a global cooldown on your abilities. So it's important that every time that you are about to engage, you pre-activate some of your abilities. Like, as you can see there, I activated my chest piece before I go and do my W and then you activate your E. Because if you try to do all of them, once you're on top of the target, they can just run and you won't do any damage because of the global cooldown. Once you activate one, you need to wait for, to activate the other one. This fight was super, super close. At the end, you will see that he barely killed me and he didn't kill me because... 
he pressed Q in front of him instead of what I was. Here we're facing a crossbow, not crossbow, wire bow. This match could be hard if this guy didn't have uh, assassin shoes. I didn't realize that he had a assassin shoes, so I was wondering what happened there. And then right here, I go and inspect him, and I'm okay. So next time that he goes in biz, I don't have to be moving and looking for him. I will know that he's just standing right there. If it would have run or refreshing sprint, it could have been a hard match because it would have been super hard to catch up to him. You see, even I miss my W, I still have a chance to get close to him. See, I knew that he was there and I just cue him right there. Here we're facing blood letter. This is another bill that they try to face thank you. So you gotta be a little bit careful to just make sure that you don't go below 40% because you'll be done. For those that does, don't know what blood letter does, the W, I mean the, the E, once you're below 40%, it does increase damage to, use, to you. Most of the time it will kill you from there. But again, don't face tank one hand dagger if you don't have a hunter hood to counter or a type of immunity. Here we're fighting another mirror. Again, my abilities are down. He got more HP than me and I just guide him. I stick around because I know I will get my abilities back before him. And daggers, they don't have much damage damage of their when they have their E on cooldown. So you see there, I just run again, I don't have abilities. And he he knew that he was too low. Right here, I have all my abilities activated already, but he didn't have his E activated and he got silent, so he was done. Again, another mirror match to keep showcasing you. When you don't have abilities, you just guide. How is it that you do it when you're fighting versus another one hand dagger? Interrupt his headpiece so he don't get his abilities back so quick. I got my abilities up again. His should be up as well. I miss over there, but I still have more HP than him. And as well, he seems to have done the mistake that I was talking about. He tried to activate all his ability while he was on top of me, so he didn't get to do much damage. Again, another match, which is a mirror. I executed my E on my chest piece. He did too, but he didn't do much damage because I knew when to run. That's the key part. Know when to kite. He did pretty good there, stopping me from doing any damage to him. I lost all my abilities, so I just kite. He got his back. He activated his chest piece, and he wasted it completely. Because I just guided him. And you see he never turned off his E as well. And he was just getting damaged while I ran. 